Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and to hang out and talk with you. I'm going to throw the Bear Cave log of the site, the moat, in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can, you know, reply with those emotes if you're a subscriber to here to the Bear Cave. Or you can just be like, uh, hi, and put another emote in there. Put an emote from another stream to you subscribe to or one of the free emotes you get. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to put in, you know what, what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in an emote from uh, another, just like another person that I support on stream. Because uh, I just, uh, I just got, hey, uh, Aristofan, hey, Lashbrook. I just got gifted, uh, um, I'm just going to put these two in. I got gifted a sub to Ben Wheeler, which was really nice. Here's the thing. I was gifted that sub. I wasn't even watching. I just got a notification that I got gifted uh, a, a, uh, a sub. And I was like, oh, cool. I'll take it. Anyway, I hope you're doing okay. I'm doing all right. I'm going to build a cool model kit because we're, uh, we're done with the upper body here of this kit. And now it's time to start working on the lower body. But we got our, uh, uh, our NT1 here and we got the upper frame done. Um, but we got to work on, uh, the, uh, legs. We did the feet at the end of the last stream, but we got, we got more to do. Um, and I do realize that when we go to the overhead, I've got to go into my settings and turn off uh, autofocus because I forgot to do that. Because, so here, here's my tip to you. Pro tip. If you want to get into model kit building on stream or Lego building or anything that uses two webcams, do not get identical webcams because the software that comes with them doesn't like you to adjust the settings for one and not the other and save those settings. It is something to do with that. So I have identical webcams and if I had single ones that I would have different software for each of them. But if I turn autofocus off on one, I can't have autofocus on the other, which I would like to have. It is a very nonsense thing. It doesn't mean anything, but it does mean that. Um, but yeah, I hope you're doing all right. Um, we're hopefully going to get a few more folks joining us tonight. I don't know. Maybe not. Thursday is often pretty good, but um, I'll say that things have been a little light. And then yesterday was better than average for my bonus dreams. Last night I played Hearthstone, and it was okay. Um, but I, uh, you know, it was fun. It was a fun stream. But, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know if we'll get, you know, big numbers for a while. Um, my hope is that, uh, um, folks at the end of my, uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club stream, or, uh, when Pat Bear's Anime Club, yelling about the shows we love is part of PAX, and it's part of the digital PAX. I'm hoping a few folks that don't know about what I do here will check that out, and then be like, oh, I'm into this. Cool. And come and see. But I don't know. I have no idea how that's going to do, because it is just one of one panel in a sea of panels that are running 24 hours a day for nine days. So I have the feeling that any audience I bring in is just people that I'm promoting to, and hopefully as I'm promoting it, it'll get retweeted by people uh, who are also on the panel. Um, due to scheduling conflicts and just trying to get it recorded in time, uh, it will just be myself and Coriander Dickinson and Beach. Uh, Brendan Beach Dairy, I should say, from Loading Ready Run. So it'll just be the three of us, which I usually don't do panels with, you know, that few people, but I feel like that's easier because despite the idea that's like, oh, it's a digital thing, so you're just doing it from home, like people got stuff going on. It's not like they're saying, well, I'm going to be at PAX this weekend, so while I'm there, if I don't have another panel, I'll do your panel. Like it's a little, e actually, honestly, a lot easier to do that. Whereas this is like, just trying to find a time where three people can all meet together to record this thing has been interesting. So, there's that. Um, <clears throat> apologize for the cough. Um, got a scratchy throat. I've got water for when it's time for water. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, tweet out that, we, that we're starting here. As I said, I do hope that more folks decide to join us. If they don't, that's okay. Um... It's, you know, if, if this is a chill light stream, 
then this is a chill light stream, and I'm going to be okay with that. So we're going to go to this. Then I got, then I have to do a thing here in property, blah, 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 configure, and then turn off autofocus and apply it, and we're good. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, let me drink a little water here. My apologies. I am being all sorts of unprofessional in this streaming situation. Hopefully, everything's going to be okay. Um, all right, so uh, we, uh, we've got the upper body here. You can see that there. We've worked on the feet. Uh, now we're going to work on one of the last parts that you can do double, and then we will start working on just all the right leg and then all the left leg. So we can do this here. I got a few pieces snipped out just to kind of work my hands, get ready for that. Uh, Thursday, I do feel a little rusty, usually on Thursday, because I have had um, days where I didn't do, you know, model kit building because I haven't built anything since Monday. And sometimes I feel my hands getting a little like, I don't know, I got to warm them up a bit, especially if I haven't done anything uh, physical. I did today, um, uh, as some of you know. My father has a uh, a uh, bike um, that I have used an adapter to make it a stationary bike, uh, and I have been riding that because it was supposed to rain today. Now, did it? No, but it was supposed to. So I uh, I try to bike like four or five times a week, and then the other days go for a walk. Um, because it was supposed to rain today, I didn't go for that walk. Instead, just biked but now I have I wish that I had because I don't know when I'm going to be able to go for a nice long walk the next time uh, it's very humid but still it's good to get out there and do some physical activity as well as mental stuff um, speaking of packs I'll tell you that uh, tomorrow I'm recording a thing uh, I am part of the smack talk showdown um, tournament there's a lot of people involved uh and uh hey hey jam welcome welcome happy to have you here so yeah I'm, I'm part of that so i'm recording my bit for that uh tomorrow night which will be fun i'm looking forward to doing that to getting on board with with those fine folks and then um saturday i'm recording peppers anime club yelling about the shows we love my my panel submission for packs uh and that's it um, another thing that I was on did not get, that I submitted, did not get accepted, and that's okay, that happens, and, uh, yeah, um, it's gonna be the least I've ever done at a, I've ever done at a PAX since, like, my first panel at PAX, because, you know, I started doing multiple panels, but pretty early on I was doing other things, so I count, like, helping out with like giant bomb pranks and various things like that as being on a panel because it, it was taking part in it but it's been a while since i've only been producing one thing and on one thing um although, although i should be fair i did that at pax unplugged because i just i couldn't travel down there I, I just did a day trip last year so all right. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well out there in, in uh, internet land. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, thank you to everyone that is a subscriber, as always. But I got my Twitch payout today, which is always uh, a great thing to see because it just means that I, uh, you know, uh, it means that enough of you subscribe to make that possible that I get a monthly payout, which is huge. Uh, and very helpful in my current situation, as you are all aware. So I do appreciate that very much. Um, let's see. I guess we could talk about Epic. If you have thoughts on, on Epic shenanigans. Um, if you didn't see what happened today. was So, um, Epic basically tried to circumvent, knowing, knowing that it would be a problem, tried to circumvent uh, in-app purchases that Apple takes a cut of uh, for Fortnite. And then Apple, because they broke their terms of service, uh, removed Fortnite from the App Store, um, which is, was is within their terms of service is totally, you know, the, a thing they can do. Um, so uh, Epic uh, 
basically was like, okay, well, here's a 65-page legal document. We're going to take you to court over this and your antitrust nature and blah, blah, blah. Um, and we're going to start a hashtag, free Fortnite. Um, and then we're going to parody your 1984 Apple commercial with our own commercial, but now you're the bad guys and we're the revolutionaries. Epic. Uh, hey, Pat, it was very strange that Epic clarified their PR contracts, contacts on Twitter at 5 a.m. today. I mean, every part of what Epic is going on uh, is weird. Every every element of what is happening with, with, with Epic right now is very strange. Um, they are, they are making moves. Moves? They're make. Uh, also, hi, Mr. Bob. Happy to have you here, as always. Um, but uh, it's just one of those things where you're like, now, is it fair to say that smaller devs are hurt, hurt very much by Apple's uh, policies and would do better? Yes. Um, and is it fair to say that if Epic gets some sort of antitrust like big win here, that it will benefit um, other developers? Yes. Is it also hilariously lame as shit that Epic was like ready to go? That they like had the legal like that they did this knowing what would happen and were prepared for it, including a parody video uh, of a commercial that one would assume Fortnite's target demographic has no no context of or context for. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous in a way that it's just like okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's interesting because it's not even about Fortnite. Someone posted part of their document saying they want to run their own game store on iOS. Yeah, I mean, last week, Fortnite is the way, by doing this in Fortnite, um, uh, Apple was trying to block devs from updating their one-time purchase apps if they did not in add app purchases a few months ago. Yes, Mr. Pop. Uh, the Apple wants in-app purchases because they want a cut. They don't want one-time purchases. Uh, they want you to. They want developers to consistently charge people money because then they get that money. Uh, that is that is a very clear thing. So they do not want one-time. They want multiple overtime things because they would like you. They would like to get a cut of all of that. Um, so, Mr. Bob, I don't know if it's super uncool. Like, hey, here's my thing. If you sign a deal with the devil, you sign a deal with the devil. Don't put your shit on an Apple if you don't want Apple to take advantage of you. Because they tell you to your face they are going to take advantage of you. Yeah, now. Did anyone that made an app on Apple that that has that doesn't have in-app purchases think that they would be bullied into it? Maybe not. Maybe they never they never thought that Apple would do that. But I also uh, I miss Windows Phone. That's that's the real issue here. Yeah, Mr. Bob, uh, I understand. Uh, I hear you. But yeah, to me, it's it's always been a thing where it's just like I don't know, man. You either. You, yeah, I, I think it does suck that your options are walled garden or uh, wasteland. And those are the two options you have where Android does not care if someone copies your app. And Apple cares so much about every minute thing that you're doing. Um, because like, and the quality control argument does fall flat their quality control argument does indeed fall flat when you reason that they are not uh, checking every movie on Netflix. 
but that's because Netflix doesn't have in-app purchases. They really just don't want Epic to make, or anybody to make money that they don't get a cut of. And I get that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what, what, if anything, becomes of all of this, except it will just be like um, a bunch of people spend a bunch of money to do a thing. But as someone pointed out on Twitter, hey, isn't it nice to like have this be the thing we think about for just like a minute? Like, is this our big distraction? Epic throwing like a well-produced tantrum? Uh, like, yeah, sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Great. I think the only uh, interest in this is cause Apple to loosen the restrictions and Microsoft brings uh, xCloud to iOS after all. I mean, that could be interesting. Uh, uh, I think Apple is in a better position than... Um, uh, certainly in a better position than Epic. I mean, I, look, have I read the court documents? No, I haven't read the court documents. Do I have plans to read the court documents? No, I do not have plans to read the court documents. Um, I will, I will leave this to smarter folks out there to take a look at this stuff and to, uh, you know, investigate the, uh, the legal standing that people have and I'll see what comes of it. But yeah, in general, to me anyway, it's mostly just like, Hey, I, that's, that's something else. Give me a second to not think about the big sorting machinery that has been taking being taken out of post offices um, and with no explanation as to why that's happening. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I would rather think about this. I haven't read court documents since White Wolf versus Underworld. Yeah. Good reference, Last Rook. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it just comes down to like, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure I'll get updates of it. Uh, let's see, who was... Somebody, like, made a gaming announcement today, and I can't... Oh, so I bet, uh, the, I bet, uh, um, yeah, there was somebody that, like, tried to, to, to have gaming news today, and it's just, like, like, I don't remember what it was. I know somebody else, uh, like, put a trailer out or had something, some kind of thing, and it was like, ha ha ha, that's not the news, don't worry. that's cute, but that's not the news, um... I would say it probably uh, is great for um, uh, for the makers of control now that people aren't thinking about uh, what's going on with them and their decision to just be like, y'all, we, we're we doing the work for some people, but not everybody. I don't know. Control's actively on fire most of the time anyway. We probably shouldn't put it on next-gen consoles. I bet this is not the version to get of next-gen consoles, so we're just going to, like, not do it to do... We're, we're doing it, but, like... Ugh. So only, only some people are going to get it. Because those people, theoretically, might not complain too loud when it's not good. Because I know plenty of people that are just like, Control? I didn't finish that. That, sh that shit runs like ass. Um, didn't run didn't run great for me. I'll say that. But I enjoyed it. Uh, the playing of it enough to overlook its shortcomings. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure they're fucking thrilled that they're not the big news story anymore. Or other news stories that people were like, yeah, no, I want to talk about that. Uh, but yeah, I literally can't remember. But there was something that was like, you know, an announcement or a trailer. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. <sighs> I've been... I was just bunk I was just hunkering down today because I had to record a bunch of video. Uh, one of the videos I recorded today will be up tomorrow, and it is a Bill with their mailbag. If you've never seen a Bill with their mailbag video, uh, it is me uh, showing when things are bought off my wish list, 
And so tomorrow I will show that video because Lashbrook, thank you Lashbrook very much, bought me a high grade that I'm going to uh, build on stream. Uh, when this is done, it's it's on deck. And so I'll have the video up tomorrow of that. So if you want to see that, uh, I understand mailbag videos are usually like people usually just click on it, look at the thing, and then move on, and I get that. But it's always nice to be able to give a shout out to people who uh, so are so generous about supporting what I do um, and helping me continue to do it because I have, you know, some income, but it is not a lot, and that goes to paying the utilities. Yeah, it did come. Uh, it got banged the fuck up. Uh so, hey, here's, here's what I'll say about this, y'all. Um, if you were going to buy a model kit from Amazon and you buy just one model kit, they're going to put that in a manila, like, envelope, like big envelope, manila, like a thing. They are not going to put it in a box uh, of any kind with padding. Now, if you buy multiple kits, they probably will put it in a box. But if it can fit in a bag, they are going to send you a bag. And then your box is going to get there kind of beat up. Because that has been my consistent thing. The kit is fine because obviously you're just getting trays. But like the box is definitely banged up. Uh, and I bet wasn't always like that. Uh, and I was like, oh, uh, all right. Uh, but uh, yeah, very happy to get that. Um, Lashbrook, thank you very much. Uh, it was very kind. Um, I look forward to putting that kit together. It's always nice to get something. And then, you know, I was going to have a poll for my $10 patrons uh, because I finally have a little bit of a backlog about what I was going to build next, but then that came. So that jumps Q. So sorry, backlog. A shame. Yeah, it's not the biggest thing in the world. Also, I don't really keep boxes that much anymore unless it's a kit that I'm really, really into and I'm going to save. I often don't keep the boxes... Uh, these days, so because um, I'm not sending them out to subscribers anymore, uh, that would just be very hard to do now and very costly to do now, and it would just require like a ride to, it would just like be a whole goddamn thing to like get to the post office consistently and mail things out. So not doing that. Uh, as it is, our mail carrier is already bringing way more packages than normal because suddenly there's a person at this house that gets a lot from Amazon to, you know, model kits from Amazon. Uh, I will say this. Uh, the box I got for the Defiant was beat up a lot. That thing got, like, a corner was dented of that package. It was, it was the most beat up I've ever seen anything outside of... Uh, the um, do you y'all remember when I, I bought that Naruto kit? It was actually from GameStop because GameStop was like liquidating a lot of their uh, model kit stuff. So I got that because it was really priced. That was a very small box in a very like the box itself was in a giant box that was so empty because it was just full of stuffing that the like the you know like someone put another box on top of it and it like caved in a bit. Uh, that was the worst packaging. Uh, and that box was beat to hell. Because, yeah, they just threw it in a box. It was not the right box. This did whatever they wanted to do. All right, so this is going to go like this. All right. A lot of good movement here. I really like that. You see that? Uh, it bends in. This piece right there. That's some. That's very nice. Lots of good articulation in this. Very, very pleased with it, uh, with the legs of this uh, kit so far anyway. Um, but yeah, let's put some armor on it. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to have another model kit. So I, I shot that video today. Then I shot next week's uh, Pat Bear, uh, sorry, Bearing the List. I always shoot the Bearing the List uh, on a Thursday before. Good evening, Dirty. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. And welcome to everybody that's joining me. Uh, thanks so much for stopping in the old Bill with Bear workshop. Um, but yeah, so I recorded next week's Bearing the List because I usually like to give myself time to do that. Uh, I just got in the habit of doing that uh, on Thursdays. And then I have to I ha had to record a new Pat Bears Anime Club for uh, Monday 
because I um, uh, I normally record Pat Bears Anime Clubs on, on, on a Saturday, but I am recording my PAX panel on Saturday, and I didn't want to record that and uh, you know do double of that and then also record uh, or also do a live stream Saturday night. So I was just like, I don't want to do all that. I'll just do this together. Um, oof. Uh, hey, if your subscription is up for renewal, please consider subscribing. If you were gifted a sub, please consider converting that. Uh, we did have a bit of a drop-off here. We are below 40, which I would love to get back above. Uh, no, no pressure if you can't or if you're just not interested. But if you ever consider becoming a subscriber, it would mean a lot to me. It's $5 a month or you link your uh, Amazon Prime with Twitch to whatever it's called. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a, uh, they changed the name and I can't remember what it's called, but tw it's not called Twitch prime anymore. Uh, and I don't remember what it is called, which is a bummer, but it's, it's not called Twitch prime anymore and it's called something else, but you can always do that. That's another way to support the channel. And you have to manually renew that every month. You can't just say like, oh yeah, I, I put that in. Uh, but if you use cash money, it does all the time. Also, gifting subs, always a great way to support the channel. You can just give the subscription to somebody. Uh, or bits and coins. Prime Gaming. Yes, okay, yes. Dirty Interest fans will see Prime Gaming. Yes, it's called, it's not called Twitch Prime. It's called Prime Gaming. Now, does that mean that we will see Prime Gaming in other places outside of Twitch because it's not called Twitch Prime anymore. It's called Prime Gaming. It, that could that could be the case. Uh, or is it possible that, uh, th you know, like I, I know that some people were speculating they're going to rebrand Twitch, which I was like, I, I feel like they're not. Uh, I feel like they're not going to call it you know, like Amazon Gaming or something. I, I'm fairly confident that they know that this is that this IP is worth you know keeping it that thing um, also despite all evidence to the contrary Amazon is aware that some people don't know that Amazon owns Twitch that they you know that they bought Twitch before there are some people out there that are like oh I didn't know that. And I don't know how you don't know that, but there are people out there that are like, like never considered why you can use your, why having Amazon Prime means that you get a free subscription to somebody. Like, it has not occurred to them. It's like, okay, that's fine. Um, all right. Well, we did one leg, so that's looking great already. Getting some work done, putting a leg on. Is that right? It looks. I'm going to go back here on our feet here and see how that looks. Yeah. All right, that looks fine. Cool. We got it. We got a leg on, and now we will move on. Um, I think they're just making the Prime trademark stronger. Uh, lose the other proper noun and put it in the generic gaming. Yeah, and so instead of Twitch Prime, it's just Prime Gaming. It also could mean that they could use Prime Gaming for something else uh, besides uh, Twitch, if they so choose to. I don't know what that would be, but they do have that option. All right, we failed to finish the leg. We're going to work on our other leg. Um, I hope you're all doing okay tonight. Uh, I don't have, like a big thing to talk about here. Uh, I'm super hyped today, uh, 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 says Dirty, because my Zoji arrived yesterday. And, uh, oh, the uh, Zozurushi. I uh, make rice and beans in my Zoji in Instapot today for lunch and dinner. 15-minute prep, less than 10 minutes cleanup. Hell yeah, Dirty, that sounds rad. Um, you check my Twitter for a photo of baked ziti that was prepared today. Uh, now, is baked ziti a very complicated dish that, like, took, like, a lot of, like, planning and thought and, like, like, 
really like stretched? No. Is it really tasty and a different way to prepare ziti than if you are, I don't know, don't have a working oven for a a large portion of time uh, and suddenly you can bake things? Uh, Yeah, it's rad. Also, baked ziti just tastes great. It just tastes awesome. It's just very good. Um, uh, let's see. My dad got everything bagels today, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some deli meats on a, on a everything bagel tomorrow for lunch, and I am very excited about that prospect. That to me is heavenly. So I am very excited about having that as a thing I can just do. Uh, cause I haven't had a bagel in a very long time. So I'm excited about having a bagel, uh, you know, a bakery bagel, you know, like yeah, you can just get a bake, like a frozen bagel or whatever anywhere, but good bakery one. Uh, that is very much something that I'm looking forward to there. But yeah, I, uh, I want to do more cooking stuff. I, I miss it. You know, we got a grill, we got a really strong, uh, you know, uh, oven and all kinds of stuff in a convection oven slash toaster oven, uh, and, you know, a lot of stuff, a uh, slow cooker and uh, a bunch of different things that, that I can play around with. And I'm looking forward to doing a little bit of that because, it, it, you know, I've been cooking for myself for so long that it's been weird not doing that. And then also to have access to a great kitchen. Uh I'm pretty psyched about that. So, you know, little things here and there. Um, yeah, I think that was a, that was like a big part of my day. Today was a lot of like prepping and just getting things ready. And it's like I said, video recording videos and, and all of that. Um, uh, oh, uh, Matt Glenn just subscribed with Prime. Oh, it just, oh, it just says Prime. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate that very much. Uh, let's throw the bear cave, the leg of the site, the moat in the chat and thank for that subscription. Uh, thank you, Matt, for that. I really appreciate it. I'm going to throw the old applause thing here. But yeah, let's throw the emotes in there, folks. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, the goal is we're at 38 right now, subscribers. The goal is always to be around 40 because that pretty much guarantees a payout every month, uh, and that would be very good. And a missed payout is a bummer. Uh, uh, Last I'm kind of jealous. I'm still working for my mostly uh, from work. Oh, I'm still working from work, so I haven't picked up any quarantine skills. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I so I tried uh, back in New York. I tried bread making, and uh, I don't think I had the proper mentality for bread making. I mean, I certainly didn't have all the proper tools for it. Um, uh, even when I had access to a toaster oven, uh, convection, convection oven, uh, in New York, I still was really fucking it up. So I, uh, didn't get much of a chance to do, uh, much, uh, experimental cooking stuff there, but I'm trying to do it here. I mean, you know, it's just fun. It's just fun to do. So if I can, I'm going to try to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, today felt like a busy day. I feel like I got a lot done, but it definitely, uh, I could feel it. Oh, I'll say this one thing that happened is, so my mom got herself a, uh, a very fit. It's not a Fitbit. It's a very fit, but it it was, it it was, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, it had good marks on on Amazon. People seem to like it. It's a it's an entry model in the fitness tracker thing. Um, so uh, you know, to get it to do anything, you've got to sync it with an app, with with an app, right? So like like you can't set the time. Like even if you didn't want to track anything, even if you just want to track steps on it, and you don't want to track it on your phone, uh, you can't set the time on it. It's got to sync the time via Bluetooth. And I don't know why, but for a reason, like, could not on my mom's phone get it to work. Could not. I was like, it just wasn't pairing. It wasn't going through. There were steps that need to happen where, like, we get pop-ups to, like, 
grant permissions and we never got the pop-ups to grant permissions. I like made sure the Bluetooth's working. I made sure that like GPS was on. Um, uh, it was just like not happening. And it was, I would say, incredibly frustrating. Uh, and then I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to put this on my phone and we'll deal with this later. So I just synced it to my phone. I got the app. It worked the first time. Immediately worked on my phone. So now my, mom, my mom's uh, uh, tracker is synced to my phone, which is definitely a temporary solution, but it was a solution and I'll take it. Uh, Dirty says, ooh, anime connection. I just remembered there was a bread recipe that you can make in a rice maker that was on an episode of uh, uh, Yakate Japan. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, sometimes the the old uh, the old anime can be inspiring. If you've got like a project you want to do, just inspiration about foods. Um, ooh, actually, that rem ooh, hey, you know what, Dirty? Thank you so much. Uh, you just gave me an idea, and so I want to thank you. Uh, that the. Uh, Oh, fate. Um, so for my Pat Bears uh, anime club, yelling about the shows we love, we're each going to be talking about two shows, long form, and at the end, we're going to talk briefly about two other shows. Um, and we won't get into really depth, so it'll be quick hits. And I wanted, I, I'm trying to do Cozy as my like quick hits, and you reminded me of a food prepping show that I think is really uh, fun and would be cool to, to recommend because I don't know if people actually watched it. Uh, so I'll be able to uh, promote that. So thank you, Dirty. You jog my memory about, a th about that, and that's great. So I just have to put the actual name of that down and do that. Uh, I would love to learn about cooking from anime. Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, there are a few, you know, obviously there is food wars and kind of the nonsense ones. And then there's like kind of more chill shows. Now, some of them are uh, like some of those food prep shows are, you know, homey kind of slice of life kind of shows. Um, uh, there's a few that are uh, that do have food stuff going on in them and they're more dramas. They're not really slight. They're, they're slice of life, but they're not chill. Uh, because they have other stuff going on there, but there, there are a few, definitely a few. Yes, yeah, sweetness and lightning uh, is definitely one of those that is like pretty chill, except like when it's definitely not. Um, but yeah, there are a few of those shows that have like uh, kind of that thing about let's learn about cooking and food and ourselves. We'll also learn about hey, we're also going to learn about ourselves. Um, some good stuff there. All right, let's get back into building here. Um, I, uh, I'm. Uh, it's not this weekend, but next weekend I'm going to be on another live stream. I'm doing another guest on a live stream. Oh, ooh, ooh. yikes! We're dropping frames here, uh, folks at home. W uh, folks watching the video later are just going to see my recording, and they'll be fine. But folks that are watching the stream. Uh, oh, got disconnected. Got straight up disconnected. Hopefully this will work out. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, did, got disconnected. Just letting, hopefully letting people know. Uh, oh, yeah. I can't let people know because I believe my internet is down. Hey, everybody watching uh, the archive of this. I'm... Uh, uh, well, we got reconnected. So maybe, maybe I got, did I get reconnected? Uh, refresh. Refresh, everybody. Those who are watching on YouTube or watching the VOD, uh, things got a little weird there. Um, but folks that are watching the stream, hopefully you'll be connected and everything will be fine because we got disconnected there. That was weird, but I think things will be all right. Uh, so hopefully everything's cool, and I'm just going to uh, check my 
Uh, I'm going to reply to my tweet. Uh, disconnected, but I'm back. Just tweet out. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, we just dropped a bunch of frames and then got disconnected. Uh, the refresh fixed it. Well, good. I'm glad. Uh, Harold, thank you for hosting. Uh, we got disconnected before we just came back. So uh, uh, that was fun because I think my connection had problems and then yours did. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Maybe it was a joint issue. Uh, but yeah, that was the thing where like, I was like, oh, this will take a second to come back. And then it just disconnected. I was like, well, who knows how long this will be? And luckily it wasn't that long. And hopefully folks will refresh and get back in. Uh, but Matt, I'm glad you were able to get back in uh, and that other people are as well. And I hope that everyone comes back because we were like, we weren't like doing a lot of big numbers there, but we had a few people watching. So I do hope that uh, that folks uh, come back because uh, it's nice to have an audience. Um, I don't know why with Twitch only I get all sorts of network errors and stuff. I mean, so I will say that I assume that Twitch is under a lot of strain lately, um, you know, this year, more so than they probably previously expected. I just imagine they're on a lot of strain, uh, their servers, um, even though they, you know, are an Amazon-owned company, they're still, like, doing a lot, because I think a lot of people are watching streams. Uh, um, you know, I do know that some people say their numbers are down lately, uh, but I don't know. Folks were getting more people watching and then, of course, less money because ad revenue is kind of dried up uh, for a lot of folks. You know, people were like, oh, yeah, I got a lot of YouTube viewers and I'm making zero dollars on YouTube right now. Uh, you may have noticed that a lot of your favorite YouTubers are suddenly have Patreons, despite never having a Patreon in the past. They suddenly are like, we have a Patreon now because... They fucking need it. They, need, you know, like uh, ads just went away, and our good paying ads just went away, and now they they seem to be coming back somewhat, which is great for, uh, you know, small time folks. Man, I really want to get off Patreon. Like, hey, if you're on, if you're supporting me on Patreon, thank you so much. I do owe you all an email about my thoughts on Patreon. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, I appreciate it. But I am seriously considering uh, alternatives to Patreon. I still will keep a Patreon, but I'm looking to to do that. Uh, I want to be a little more solvent uh, when I start looking at alternatives. Um, uh, my stream time has more than doubled the last few months. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't doubt it. I'm definitely checking in with streams more during the day than I used to ever because I did have a dip in people that I was watching on YouTube that were making stuff because some people, like, I follow a lot of people that, like, work from home uh, and always work from home. But I also follow a bunch of people that don't work from home and were running into, like, uh, issues where they just weren't getting up as much video stuff uh, the, as they used to because they, you know, had offices. Uh so the, I had a dip in some of the videos I was watching, and suddenly I'm definitely in front of a computer more. Uh, so yeah, my 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 like uh, I guess I'll see who's on Twitch during the day has definitely increased. Whereas it used to be like uh, Twitch used to be appointment television for me. Like okay, well I know that this person I like is streaming, or oh I saw on Twitter that this person that I think is great is streaming. I'll go check them out. Whereas it uh, it now is. Let me just hit Twitch and see who I'm following, if any of them are on. And like, oh, so-and-so is on this afternoon. I'll go check them out. Or like, VODs. Uh, I've been watching a lot more VODs than I used to uh, of people. Because I was like, oh, I think this person played this like the other day. I'm going to go check that out because I have the time to do it. Because, uh, yeah, I got more time. Oof. I do hope a few more folks come back. I understand sometimes when people get disconnected, uh, they're just like, well, time to move on. Not time to find out if they come back. But I do hope, hope that a few, few people choose to return. Uh, and if not, that's okay. If that's the reason why we had a low numbers, that's better than just no one came at all. Uh, yeah, but, you know, 
We'll figure it all out. Uh, let's see. I'm starting to get some uh, uh, anime trailers for October season because it is August. It's August. Uh, so since it's August, we're starting to get trailers for things that are coming out, which is interesting. Uh, we're not, we haven't hit all the heavy hitters, but we're getting more of the heavy hitters uh, coming out, uh, which has been cool as somebody that watches a lot of anime and likes to watch a lot of anime. Uh, it's kind of cool to start seeing these new shows come out, including some shows that were supposed to be summer shows and got pushed because a bunch of stuff got pushed. So that's been kind of nice to check that out. And then some things. Uh, I mean, I, the other day uh, I talked about uh, um, uh, Noblesse and how I checked that out because it was uh, uh, it was like the first like webtoon, to, one of the first, not the first, one of the first webtoons to like make an impact as an OVA, uh, and now it's going to be a full series uh, because I think it's Silver Guardian. Silver Guardian was the first webtoon I think that became a Japanese animation. Uh, and that was like 12 minute episodes and seems not good. I watched the first two episodes of the Silver Guardian uh, or Guardian Jin, I think it's called. Uh, and you uh, did not seem great. And I was like, meh, I think I'm okay. Uh, uh, Tobata, the last dungeon yet. Um, I don't think that that has been. Uh, we've heard details yet. Uh, let me. Let me see if I can check some of my sources there. Um, uh, but I don't think I don't think we've heard an update of that. I don't think it was pushed, but uh, I don't think that it is uh, news. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about that yet. Um, I mean, things are just starting to come out. We're just starting to see our first trailers. Uh, and a lot of those trailers are things that weren't originally going to be in this season that were going to be last season. Like, we've already seen a trailer for um, uh, a regular at Magic School because uh, that was a known quantity that was pushed because other things were, you know, had been pushed. So that got pushed as well. Um, and then word is that... Uh, one of my favorites from the beginning of this year, uh, the the uh, the last season, the spring season that was postponed due or uh, went on hiatus due to Corona, uh, was Gal and Dino. That's apparently coming back in October because they had to wait a long time to work on the uh, the scenes that were live action. Because apparently. And which makes sense. That's two different studios. One studio works on the animation. The other studio works on the live action. Uh, and the live action was behind because, uh, because, because of course they were for re good reasons. Uh, so supposedly that's coming back in October. Now my hope is that new episodes come back in October and that it starts in September, showing the old ones. But probably what's going to happen is. In October, they're going to start from episode one again, and I'm going to have to wait like two months before they get to episode nine or eight or whatever where they left off. Uh, and so that's frustrating. Uh, we had to do that with Diary of Our Days at Breakwater, which we'll talk about in the second hour, um, which uh, basically like came back but had aired a couple episodes. So those episodes had to re-air in Japan for, you know, for people. They don't just want to start with whatever, so... When it took over its time slot, it's re-aired it. And then uh, the same thing for um, Food Wars. But Food Wars hadn't aired that many episodes because it started late in the season. So they didn't have that much to air before it came back back. Uh, and I get that. I think that's smart to like be like, well, if you miss it the first time, now you can watch it. And Because if you're like, oh, yeah, I want to check out this new show that I heard was good but was on during a hiatus uh, or was on then and then you're like oh it just starts here it didn't start at the beginning like I get that it's unprecedented times so I, I can understand it uh, but yeah we're starting to get a few few things coming out and uh, it'll be interesting to see 
what's actually good and what is just whatever. Um, I'm hoping for more slice of life uh, because... Literally, our slice of life this season is Diary of Our Days at Breakwater, and that was supposed to be last season's show. So, the fact that there's, like, no other, like, slice of life at all is kind of surprising. So, hopefully, uh, we will we'll get a few more fun ones. I mean, it, it'll be the fall season uh, fall and winter are where we do get a bunch of those, but I think fall, hopefully, we'll have a few more. Um, uh, and then we are getting next year, season two of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. They put out a uh, poster thing. Uh, and then the new thing that is happening with anime with posters, which I love, is so they'll put out the poster and they're like, hey, the promotion material today. And they're like, hey, Gintama movie, the final movie, is going to come out this time. Uh, we've got season two of uh, uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid coming at this time. And you're like, cool, cool, cool. And then they put out a second version, an alt version of the promotional image. And it's them wearing face masks. And that is the new trend in anime promotional material is to have your face mask version. And I'm just like, you know what? That's awesome. Like that that does that just feels like it's like yeah, sure. Toru says wear a mask, and I was like, yep, I, I like that. I appreciate that. I think that's like that's pretty cool. All right, so our legs are done. Now all we have left is to build the waist, the waist, and we'll get into that. We'll wait a little bit before I pause for the cause. Usually we do that around the 10 p.m. hour. We did have a disconnect there, so I do want to uh, give a little bit more building in here. We'll get a little farther in our building um, before we do that. Uh, and let's try to get some of the waste done. Uh, no matter what, when before we start putting on the armor, well, we'll do the weapons here, but we'll definitely get a photo of it as it looks now before we start putting the armor on because that's like a whole other thing. Uh, it doesn't look like anything has to come off. It's just we have to put a bunch of stuff on. We also have to put the backpack together, right? Yeah, we got to do the backpack and the weapon. So we've got more to build. Uh, let nothing go to waste. Indeed, Harold. Um, I didn't say that we were working, that it was leg day tonight because we, I make that joke too often. It's not really a joke is the thing. So I, I'm not trying to say Oh, it's leg day here at the Build a Bear Workshop. But it, it we did work on legs, so it was technically leg day. Um, I shouldn't think if there's anything else that I was like wanted to talk about. I'm kind of boring these days. I don't have a lot of cool shit going on. Um, trying to have some cool shit going on in my life stuff I can talk about but uh, it's kind of coming up empty uh, you know just is uh, was hopefully gonna see a friend of mine before he that is was in the area before he went back up to New York because he had been down here working and staying with his in-laws but uh, he uh, fortunately, the timing just did not work out. Uh, we are both people without licenses that cannot drive cars. And so it was uh, trying to coordinate time for us to hang out was was not going to just work out, unfortunately. He was busy, too, because he was working a lot on stuff. So, But it would have been nice to see him. It's okay. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, 19, great. Uh, yeah, so we're working on the waist here of this kit. I really like this kit. You know, uh, this is only our second Master Grade since I've been down here, and it is just a pleasure to work on a Master Grade. Uh, you know, like, 
high grades, especially modern high grades, 2000, let's say 15 since, I think the modern, uh, our master grades uh, have been, or sorry, high grades, the modern high grades have been really high quality and really, inter uh, really uh, been happy to build them. But just uh, the 1100 scale is just my favorite scale. It's just a big, big, cool friend. And I just like working in that scale. So I'm always pre uh, prefer to do this. Uh, oh, we got a um, uh, question. Where did you get your manga and anime from? I'm mainly using Crunchyroll and Comixology Amazon. So, Matt, um, I have a premium account on Crunchyroll and I have a premium account on Funimation. I used to use Hulu because Hulu was like a okay price and got some of those shows. Uh, it just came down to there always be like one or two shows that I wanted to see. Now, what's ended up happening is um, uh, some Funimation stuff doesn't go to Hulu anymore because they go to Annie Labs, which is New Zealand and Australia. So uh, I couldn't watch, I couldn't get some things that I wanted to get and they had to be on a Funimation. So I ended up getting a Funimation account. Uh, as far as manga, I don't read a lot of manga these days. I do have, you know, Crunchyroll to kind of read through that. Um, and uh, uh, occasionally I have, like, some access to Viz through a friend. So I can go and check out some of their archives. Um, uh, but uh, I don't read a lot of manga that much. Um, I kind of just, like, keep up with what's going on. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so that's kind of all I'm doing these days is that uh and then every once in a while i will get a month of netflix and binge through things like i have not seen the great pretender yet um i have heard good things about that i plan on checking it at some point but it'll have to be like there'll be an event that wants me to get you know that i'll want to get netflix and then i'll catch up on it uh because i got it the last time i got it was for dora hodoro when that came out uh in full because i really wanted to watch that um, I did not watch Jeff play that Tony Hawk demo today. I had other video stuff going on today and did not watch that. And I also recorded a bunch of stuff this afternoon. So, um, I will probably watch that tonight. Uh, the pretender was an awesome show. Great dirty. Yeah. Uh, I've heard very good things about it. Um, I saw a few clips that intrigued me. I just, uh, it was, you know, it is on my thing it is on my to watch this year. Because, uh, you know, eventually I do want to watch it. But uh, I'm trying to keep down my subscriptions uh, to big, giant corporations, right? My Crunchyroll is paid for uh, uh, by a friend, um, uh, which is very generous of, of him to do um, uh, through the through the, the company. Uh, but, you know, paying for Funimation, I'm trying to keep, like, stuff that and, like, you know... Uh, Amazon and a few other things. Uh, I'm gonna. I think I gotta let my. Yeah, there's a thing. There's definitely a thing I want to. I want to. I'm gonna let my uh, PowerPoint. Uh, I've been paying Microsoft to have uh, Microsoft Office just the PowerPoint, um, and it became like the company for the company I was working for. They were using it, so it's not that much money a month. But I'm like, I'm not using PowerPoint. I'm. When I have to make a PowerPoint presentation these days, I'm just using Google Drive. So I'm just going to use Google Drive from now on uh, for that, um, or Google Sheets or whatever. So I think I'm going to let that go. Uh, oh, not the anime, the live action show with that name. The, the Pretender, the television show. Okay, not great. Not great Pretender, the uh, anime. Okay. Yeah, that TV show is pretty good. That's a that's a good premise. I don't hate that premise. Uh, I didn't watch all that show, but it was pretty good. Uh, the demo looked too good. Like I only played uh, on GBA, so the game always looked like a little cartoony to me. Oh yeah, well if you played on the GBA, um, yeah, I'm excited about that uh, for fans. Also, there's some bands that I like and some bands that I know on that soundtrack, and I'm excited for more people to engage with those bands and like. Like, Fiddler is by no means a small band, but in the grand scheme of things, Fiddler is a small band. Fiddler being in Tony Hawk is fucking perfect. It's so good for, one, people listening, because they're going to hear Fiddler, and they're going to be like, 
holy shit, who is this? And then also, it's just going to be really great for Fiddler. Because, like, it is it is just, like, the right good choice. Um, there's a bunch of other bands on there, obviously. But they're going to be in that. But that is... Uh, that was the one that stood out to me as like, oh, fuck yeah. Uh, just, a, just a good, good, good band. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been, you know, I'm going to try to spend whatever money I have outside of uh, my storage unit and my phone spending whatever I can uh, on, you know, on model kit stuff and, and building because that is, you know, folks help me out on Twitch and through Patreon. And I try to take all that money and put it back into model kits, uh, wherever I can, uh, whenever I can, and just immediately dump that back right back in constantly and consistently trying to get you your anime, uh, discussions, but also cool model kits. I gotta build cool model kids, y'all. Gots to. Um, oh, I'll tell you right now, folks. Uh, that um, Defiant, that Deep Space Nine ship, uh, not going to be a hard kit to put together. That kit is all decals. That kit is a lot of see-through-ish, maybe glow-in-the-dark pieces. I don't know if it glows in the dark, but it looks like it does. And... A whole, whole lot of uh, uh, decals. So I'm going to have to do some water transfers or at least get a few on there because it's otherwise it's going to, I mean, it'll be a one ch a stream build if I don't spend some time trying to put model or trying to put something special on there. Um, so it probably wasn't worth the money I paid for it considering how like quick it will be to build but I do like working on some one I like working uh on a kit uh by a company I've never gotten anything from uh so that's kind of fun that's different and two just the idea of building a kit from uh from Star Trek like just appealed to me because we've done Star Wars but we've never done Trek so like I don't know that's cool and taking a break from, you know, Gundam and Lego. Now, do do people clearly prefer Gundam over Lego? It seems like y'all do. And that's fine. I respect that. Understand it. But also, feels like, you know, when I do something different than what I've normally done, a few people kind of get into that. So, it's nice. But we've got this high grade, or master grade, and then we got a high grade to build that Lash broke, bought, because we got to build that next. That's got to be what comes next. Uh, we're going to finish this one component here, uh, and then we will get into a uh, discussion of ways you can support the stream. We're going to do our pause for the cause, and I'll explain what that is in a moment. Uh, but I want to get this piece done, and then we'll put one more in there to lock it in place. So we'll almost be done with the waist, and then we can just do the side pieces here. And a few other things. We've got to put more of these little gold things on here that I don't know what they're supposed to be. Pendants. They look nice. Um, but yeah, we'll get that together, and then we'll take a pause for the cause. And then we got to talk about anime. Came out since my last build stream on Monday. Uh, if you go to my YouTube, uh, you can see uh, the archive of my Hearthstone stream from last night. My bonus weekly bonus stream was in Hearthstone, and that was a lot of fun. Had a good time in Hearthstone. Uh, like doing that now and again. Uh, and then, yeah, so that was kind of fun to jump in and check out. So we can put this. This goes here. Look at this. So yeah, check that out if you missed it. We had a good little turnout last night. I was happy with that. A few new faces. It's always nice. 
But I was a little bummed when people were like, hey, I, I checked this out. I'm finally going to come see one of your build streams. And I'm like, this is not my build stream. This is the once a week where I don't do that. Sorry. And they're like, oh, okay. I'm building decks. That, that maybe counts. Anyway, let's take a pause for the cause. Now, if you're new to the stream and you're like, I don't know. I kind of know what that means. But what does it mean in your context, Pat? Let me explain. First and foremost, let's see the bear cave, the leg of the scythe emote. If you're a subscriber, you can throw those emotes into the chat. Let the people know. Uh, subscribing is a great way to support the stream. All the stuff I'm about to talk about is optional. You don't have to do any of that. You don't even have to give me a follow. You can just, you know, come here because you see me link to something on, twit, on Twitter and just come along. But if you do want to give me a follow, that would be rad. And turn your notifications on so you know when I go live. Uh, if you wanted to become a subscriber using Cash Money or Prime, you could also do it with Prime, Prime Gaming. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime linked with your Twitch account, you get one token a month. You could use that on somebody. And if you wanted to use that on me, well, that would be rad. Uh, you can also gift subs. Hey, it's halfway through the month. We have had zero gift subs this month. That's okay. You're under no obligation to do that. But if you'd like to give someone a sub, you're more than welcome to, obviously. Bits and coins also appreciated. Uh, we got Harold and Dirty on our leaderboard for that. Uh, so donating anything could get you on that leaderboard, unless you already have, in which case you just move it up. Uh, you're under no obligation to do any of those things. Uh, but if you wanted to, uh, it would be rad. Uh, any mini money I make on Patreon or Twitch or my YouTube ads all goes into me buying kits and equipment. Uh, so we are going to talk about ways you can support the channel if you want to. This will take a couple of minutes and then we're going to get back into building because uh, that's what we're here to do is build. Uh, so I don't run ads in the middle of the stream. I don't. Uh, I try not to pepper throughout talking about ways to support the channel. But I do like to take a break uh, once uh, a stream and kind of talk about those things um, about halfway through. So uh, I have a Patreon, as I mentioned. Uh, there's $1 tiers, $3 tier, $5 tier, $10 tier. If $5 a month through Twitch is not to your liking, there's that option. Uh, uh, got a great support on Patreon. We had dipped a little bit, and now we're back to where we need to be, which I really appreciate. Um so thank you to everybody that's donated there. Uh, also, uh, just direct donations that will go into my model kit building fund, uh, our model kit purchasing fund, I should say. Uh, and that's Coffee and Streamlabs and PayPal. Uh, I am th theoretically going to be approved for Coffee Gold, um, which is a similar to Patreon subscription service where you get messages and there are tiers. I'm still working on that. It is a flat rate to process that um, and uh, is a better payout uh, to me than Patreon. But I have not uh, I have not secured that yet. When I do, I'll let people know I'm not going to cancel my Patreon. But there is that thing. Uh, don't drink that gold coffee. Hey, it's gold. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, as I mentioned... Uh, the next kit I'm going to be building is from my Amazon wish list because if you buy something from my Amazon wish list, it jumps ahead of the stuff that I bought myself because I want to thank people for buying stuff for me to build. So I have an Amazon wish list. We're going to talk about that very briefly. Uh, uh, we've got some Lego sets, very inexpensive. They're three in one, so I got to build them there. One looks like it is currently out of stock, but it'll come back. I want to build that shark at some point. Um, but I've got some Lego. I've got some high grades that are pretty inexpensive. I've got uh, uh, some paint stuff or, or some, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, not paint stuff, but some, some stuff that, like, uh, involves glue. That's what I meant. Uh, some glue kits and uh, a bunch of different things. Some master grades right now are very expensive, and I would say don't buy those. Don't spend a lot of money on a very expensive, hard-to-find kit. Don't spend a hundred dollars on uh, uh, a master grade for me to build. Um, I mean, you could, but don't. And there's some tools at the bottom, uh, some gear that would be great for the stream that is optional. But I know some people like can't make up their mind about kits, and so they like seeing something a little different. Um, I just want to see if any, anything else in here is has been purchased lately. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and as I said, if you buy something off my wish list, it jumps the queue and I build it sooner uh, as a thank you. Um, 
Uh, we're going to get back to building in just a minute. I got a few more things to say. Uh, I have an alternative to uh, my Amazon wish list. If, you, if you're like, uh, I don't want to buy things from Amazon. You could buy a gift card from USA Gundam Store. You go to the address there. All of this is in the show description for YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, it's all in the show description. You go to there. You buy a gift card. They send you an email with that code. Then you whisper me here on Twitch or DM me on Twitter because my DMs are open. And uh, you say, hey, here's this gift card uh, number. Buy something. And you make a suggestion like, hey, get a Dragon Ball kit with this money or something. Uh, and I... Uh, and that would count just like something bought from my Amazon wish list. So when it arrives, I'll build it. I have two things coming uh, that were bought. Um, so in uh, October, uh, in October is going to be great because sometime in October, I'm going to get a cup noodle model kit that someone uh, sent me uh, a, a gift card to buy. And uh, I got a gift card uh, from Harold a while back uh, to get, and I purchased the figurize ultimate gohan uh dragon ball kit with that and so when i get that that'll jump the queue uh, i cannot wait to build that because uh gohan rules and also i really like building those dragon ball kits so that's coming um and now uh i have a discord you can join my discord if you want i post photos of all my build streams i post links to Videos that I've made, people post stuff they're working on. Uh, Slowbird just posted some stuff that was very cool in the Discord. So come check that out. Uh, and uh, and uh, we had somebody else just post some stuff like work in progress photos, which is kind of neat. Normally people just post stuff when they're done, but somebody was posting work in progress and I thought that was cool. Uh, okay, there's that. That's it for our links. Uh, videos. So next Monday I have a new Pat Bears Anime Club coming out. My last... Pat Bears Anime Club, if you missed it, is a long one. If you're looking, if you didn't watch my live stream recording, this is the archive of that uh, for Pat Bears Anime Club, which was my, like, summer, like, roundup. So if you're looking for a long video about a bunch of anime, that's a long video for you. And then yesterday I put up a new episode of uh, Bearing the List, Shonen Protagonist. That's right, it's another anime uh bearing the list this one was all about shonen protagonists it is a long video because that list featured a lot of shonen protagonists not all of them uh and maybe not as i think asta was the last modern one or no uh uh the girl from uh from promised neverland is probably the most modern character in that uh so it was missing a few but it had a lot and i have thoughts and i'm still waiting for people who love one series in particular to find out that I was shitting on that series and come at me. And they have not yet, but I expect it. It'll be what I least suspect it, I think. But it, it's definitely coming because I, I don't... There's an anime I just don't like out there with that has a protagonist that is it. He's not a shonen protagonist. And that's just it. He's just not. Uh, jerk. All right, I'm going to drink some water, and then we're going to get back to building. Ooh. Great, great, great. All right. Let's get back to building, and let's talk about anime that came out in this last week. we got to put more of these things on here, so let's get that going. Okay, Black Clover. Uh, this is the most filler-ass filler episode. Uh, if you haven't been keeping, keeping up, uh, they've been doing a lot of filler episodes right now. This is their first major filler arc. Uh, but basically, they're just... Um, a time skip is supposed to be happening and characters are supposed to have powered up. So they know what characters powered up and how they powered up or uh, evidence of it. So now they're uh, through filler filling in the blanks. And this episode just felt, it felt like Naruto filler. It felt like bleach filler. It felt like, oh no, we need one more episode for this arc. Uh, I don't know. Well, we had one character leave, so let's find out what happened to him. So, Zora is already my least favorite Black Bull. He is the second newest member. Uh, while he does have a, a sad backstory like many characters in the show, he's also an edgelord, and I think he sucks. Uh, I kind of like his magic, but I, and I understand that he's modeled himself like after the superhero doll that his dad made, but like... I don't, 
I don't think Zora is that cool. I like his magic. It's trap magic. That's kind of interesting. Or it's ash magic. Uh, but he, he makes traps and just to fool with people. Um, Harold brings up a reference uh, to a Desert Bus uh, called Zippo Tricks McEdgelord. And you're not that far off. He is like... Like, he wears a mask that is, like, monster teeth. Uh, and he just kind of... So, anyway, uh, he's like, I'm not going to train with these dummies, um, you know, on the... Whatever, and cooperate with them. I'm going to go off and train. So, he goes off to train alone, and he runs into the son of the man who used to give his father flowers. Um, uh, is a guy that sells flowers. That uh, is a peasant from where he grew up, and he doesn't recognize uh, Zora because Zora is in disguise, um, which is convenient. Anyway, the kid wants to be a magic knight. There's a lot of flashbacks of Zora with his dad, uh, and he ends up with basically it's all that. It's a lot of things, and it's a lot of like um, uh, it is a lot of like. Oh, I'm going to help you with this situation. Like, there's a whole thing. We turn, we find out that the father also has been training to be a magic knight in his off time. And they both have the same dream. And that's cool. That's fun. Uh, so, a kid is encouraged. Also, uh, Zora gets a magic item that will boost his power. That he confiscates. He probably shouldn't have, but he does. And he then says... I'm going to get to this zero level. This, you know, He's going to power up and he's going to grow and get there so he can fight these demons and be a cool uh, magic knight. Uh, but he says, oh, I guess I can't leave it to those, those, the, black, the rest of the black bulls to train themselves. I guess I better go back. Which basically means he realizes that, like, what is he doing on his own? He's going to train with other people. That's how he's going to get better. And he's and he's, but he can't just admit that he's got to be edge lordy about it. Uh, so yeah, so this was my least favorite of all the filler. I even liked the dating, the one where they went on blind dates again better because it had some pl character development for a few people. Um, uh, so yeah, it was certainly my least favorite of the of the current uh, arc. Uh, let's see. Uh, Diary of Our Days at Breakwater. This one was pretty fun. Um, uh, I had forgotten that they call a uh, horse mackerel uh, little horsies because the advisor to the fishing club comes in and says, I haven't eaten any deep fried little horsies. Uh, and so she wants to have a horsey party because she ran out of money and she also hasn't had that snack in a while, but she promises, she promises not to drink, which, you know, she shouldn't in the club room. Um, I guess it, look, it's definitely, I'm definitely an old man about this. I, and, and I acknowledge that I am an old man about this, but like the character trait of the competent teacher who is also a lush, like it has lost its shine for me. I mostly just think that it is a bad, it's just a bad thing and shouldn't be it shouldn't be an anime trope. It's just such a weird trope to be there. That like, oh yeah, she's she's great, except for the whole drinking thing, being a lush, having a drinking problem. I'm just like, yeah, why is that in this show? Anyway, so uh, they're going to go try to uh, catch little horsies. Uh, and uh, that goes all right. Um, we go to a bait shop and we meet Akia, the shop owner. Uh, and he just seems like a bald. So there's a little bit of business where he's a bald man with a mustache. And the um, mascot of the store is an octopus with a mustache. And the octopus looks like him. And that's just, I don't know, that's fun. I like that. I think that is a fun little bit of business. That's uh, pretty cute. Uh, all right, so this is going to go in. Okay, so it goes in like that. Yes, that goes in like that. Sorry, that took a second to figure out. Um, 
Uh, everyone's haircuts are so bad. Oh, I finished Naruto, read and read through Boruto as well. I was surprised to find there are like three times as many anime episodes there of manga chapters. Everyone haircuts about. There's so much filler in Naruto and already an enormous amount of filler in Boruto. Boruto has so much filler. Uh, it is pretty remarkable, Ashbrook. Uh, anyway, so, hey, uh, Diary of Our Days Breakwater is just a lovely show and I would recommend it, uh, uh, if you have a uh, Funimation, check it out because it is just an adorable program. Anyway, um, uh, there's a little montage of them cooking stuff uh, and or catching the little horsies, which are just fish. Uh, uh, and then um, Hina agrees to help gut and prepare, and she goes in this like fugue state where she just like she said that they're saying like, "Well, think of it as like the, a plushie." You're just removing stuffing from a plushie that you made because Hina's really great at making stuff. Um, and uh, she just goes into this like really weird state and it's kind of, she zones out and it's kind of disturbing. It is like a weird moment in the show uh, that was kind of strange, uh, but it's over pretty fast. So we're just going to move on, I guess. Um, it's cute. I enjoy this show a lot. So the second half is uh, she makes a cute handbag. She's still a crafter, even if she's not in the crafting group, because she ended up joining this instead. Uh, so there's a qu cute shot of her uh, finishing a handbag, and her mom is like, "Hey, you want to catch more of those little horsies? We really got we we got used to that. We brought a bunch home. We really liked them. You think you could go out and fish? Because she found all her granddad's uh, fishing gear." Because uh, that they're where he used to live, uh, and so she agrees that she's going to go try fishing on her own, um, and uh, it doesn't go well. She bought the she brought the wrong style uh, rod, and she brought uh, the the uh, what is it called uh, hooks. The hooks are wrong, so Natsumi comes and they catch a bunch of horses, and it's it's great, hooray. And then there is a little fun little back and forth where uh, where uh, Natsume is like, why didn't you call me? Uh, she's like, oh, I, I wanted to surprise you. And then and then something about like, oh, you actually know what you're talking about. That's frustrating for some reason. And I thought, I don't know, it was cute. Cute little bit of business in this show. Um, Diary of Our Days of the Breakwater is a cute show. I'm happy it's back after the hiatus that I had to take. Uh, because it is nice, and as I said, it is the only slice of life available, uh, even if sometimes it is uh, is not as chill as some other slice of lives are. Uh, there are times where it is definitely not chill, but it's still fun. Um, okay, so now let's talk about decadence. Decadence. Uh, if you come to this show for uh, Natsume, the young girl with the missing hand, who is trying to be a tanker and is slowly coming into her own uh, as she kind of understands what's going on in her life. Um, this episode's not for you because she's barely in it. There is there is a moment in between some other stuff that happens where we see her being worried because she can't find Kab uh, Kabagari or Kabu. Uh, she can't find Kabu anywhere. This is the guy that trained her uh, who is unbeknownst to her a computer, an artificial intelligence that generally lives in a tiny robot and often transmits its memory or its abilities into an android that happens to look like human, uh, artificial body that looks human, um, to do things. She doesn't know that, that, is, that that's what's going down. Um, she doesn't know that she's part of a grand simulation that none of the things she thinks are real are real. Uh, she is unaware of that. She's starting to understand that not everything she thinks is true is true. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is, I mean, we also find out in this episode that uh, things haven't been bad right now because they, they, they unlocked the next zone early. So uh, the, uh, the company that runs all these games had to like take time off to get things ready. So they're safe right now. Uh, so 
uh, Kabagari got zapped in his android form. He wakes up in his robot body. He thinks he's going to be uh, scrapped, but instead he is sent to a bug correction facility. Uh, and it's hinted at that somebody intervened to make sure he goes there. We don't know who did that. Uh, I am wondering if that was the guy that uh, that he communicated with that is in charge of, that is also posing as a human, that is in charge of the weapons in Decadence. Uh, that is my guess as to who uh, helped him out uh, in that instance. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, but uh, somebody did, and we don't know who, and maybe we'll find out sooner or later. But anyway, so he's in this, like, uh, I don't know quite how else to say it. Uh, it's a bug correction facility. It is a rehabilitation center. And as you know, those aren't real. Um, it's just a fancy way to say prison. So they're doing manual labor to be re uh, rehabilitated, but nobody thinks that anyone's ever actually done all the work. It's mostly just forcing them to, it's punishing them uh, for people that they think, uh, you know, erasing them would be too good of a, of a punishment. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, Kabu is saying, well, I'm going to get out of here. If there's a way out of here, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, and he finds out, um, that the bugs, some of the bugs that are more free, uh, wheeling and more dangerous, they figured out a way to, uh, enter the game again. Uh, through a new character. Uh, and so Kabu goes to find them and finds out that the leader of this crew is Donatello, who he used to partner with and was sent to a correctional facility uh, and, uh, you know, has a grudge against Kabu. Um, and uh, they have a death dive, which is a fight to the death, but neither of them dies. It's okay. Kabu saves them both. Uh, and then uh, they're going to help him by so he can go and talk to the tanker, which we know as Natsume, the human. Uh, so there was a lot of Kabu in that episode. Oh, also there's a brief thing of like one of the characters I like there. There's a, a fun little char robot character named Jill, who I um, instantly was like, this is my favorite new character in the show. Uh, I hope we get to see more of Jill uh, because she's just like, they're like, hey, do this thing. And she's like, I was gonna. Uh, and I just like, I like her attitude. She's, that was a fun character. Uh, Decadence is on Funimation. And I would recommend it. I, it might be on Hulu. It might be the ones that's also on Hulu. Because I haven't been paying attention. So if you have Hulu, you can check to see if it is. Um, but uh, that's a cool show. And it's an original anime. And we should support... Uh, original series that are not based on manga or, um, or uh, uh, you know, light novel stuff, or as what's happened this year, it's not based on a mobile game. So go out and support that if you want. It's a cool sci-fi show, and it's got uh, a lot of layers to it. It is a deeper show than I would have given it credit to originally, uh, even though I would have liked this. It's my biggest complaint about the show is that this show actually is Kabuto's, uh, uh, sorry, Kabugari's uh, story, not Natsume's story. And I wish it was Natsume's story because that's so lacking. We're so lacking in uh, stories that uh, where, it, especially like action shows and shonen stuff where, with a female lead. So uh, I was pretty amped about that. And it's, it's not that um, as much. So that's a bummer. Uh, I got one more anime show to talk to you all about uh, that we got to talk about. Uh, <sighs> Gibate. I'm, I call it Gibate. I don't know what it actually is called. Uh, but uh, Gibiati. Gibiati? It might be Gibiati. Uh, Gibate. I don't know. Uh, so it turns out that uh, Adam... The shitty soldier guy. Well, he just had to kill Brian last episode. The not shitty soldier guy. Because Brian was turning. So it turns out he got bit in this last fight that they've been doing. Uh, and he knows he's going to turn into a monster. Uh, 
is because that's what happens when you get bit is you turn into a monster in this world because that's the whole fucking problem. So he runs into a group of lizards and he uh, sacrifices himself by blowing himself up uh, so they don't have to put him down and also he can help them in his final act. So in his final act, he's a little bit braver than he was previously, although they do punk him out by having him say, cry out for his mother right before he passes away, which is a little less badass than the moment was. It does undercut a bit the badass nature of the moment. Uh, but yeah, so now, now we're just down to the ninja, the samurai, the warrior monk, uh, the 18-year-old, her mom, and the great, one of the best doctors in the world. That's our crew. Uh, so, uh, this episode is a lot about Yuki Mojo, which is the warrior monk. He is from a period of time before the Ninja and the Samurai because he was dealing with the conflict of uh, o uh, uh, Ona, uh, uh, or Oda, Oda. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, and it turns out uh, Dozon, um, the guy that, he calls he named his club Dozen. That actually is the name of the guy that he fought with and, and died. Um, and it's the club that activated the magic. And I just want to point this out. So what's happened in this series is uh, nothing to do with or maybe to do with these monsters that are appearing and all that is that... Um, uh, Okay, uh, we're just going to hold on one second, folks. We're just going to I'm just going to ban this fake account. That was not a real person, y'all. Uh, and I got them before they could ask to draw something for me or whatever they were about to do. Anyway. Um, if that happened to be a real person, I apologize, but I don't think it was. Anyway, um, so I just want to put this out. So there's a ninja and a samurai and a warrior monk, and they were all sent to the modern time from some, from their time periods. And two of them, the, the, uh, the ninja and the samurai came together because they, uh, uh, they were being exiled and their boat sank. Uh, look, the, No, Dirty, they just said something like, hey, I found your Twitch channel, so good to meet you, or something, and used my name with a tag, and it's just, it was a very fake message from uh, Dilo, uh, Dilo Led Comp Psi 79 Cons. Which just doesn't, you know, that could be a real one, but didn't feel real. Just didn't feel real. Anyway, um, so there, they were summoned like that. And then our warrior monk, we found out how he was summoned. He, his friend died. Literally, his friend died uh, in this last battle. Uh, and he was trying to escape. And then putting... He put his he like leaned on his spiked club in this pool of water, and then it activated some sort of spell. So when we meet him a couple episodes ago, and we're like, "Oh, this guy looks cool. He's so friendly. He woke up in the future, but he's like still willing to help people." Moments before he time traveled to that, he just watched his best friend die. So like, that's. That's fucking heavy. This dude dealt with some heavy shit immediately before uh, all of this, uh, which is which was kind of surprising. Anyway, then some weird shit happened. Uh, they uh, there so a while ago there was a dude in a, a kimono and um, a guy dressed up like he is a uh, uh, what did I call it? I wrote it down. Uh, oh, he's a that he's like a wannabe gangster. That uh, a gangster that wants to be like a secret agent. Uh, we saw those guys before, uh, and then um, 
Then there's a dude with a sword that's wearing a mask, but he's definitely not like a time traveler. He's like a modern dude. Uh, well, it turns out that they are uh, they're gangsters, and they uh, they try to kidnap Kathleen with a net, and they're like, "Hey, give us all, just leave all your food and get out of here." You know, obviously we're gonna kidnap this girl, uh, and uh, and then like they're just like non-pulsed and non-phased by this. They're like, uh, yeah, we're not going to let you do that. And the ninja's like, really? There's so few humanity left. And there's still people like this. Uh, and then the lead guy is like, well, I'm going to take out the, you know, like, oh, I'll fight this samurai. I'll show you how tough I am. And he instantly gets defeated, but with the back of his sword, because Sensu... Sensu has killed so much in the war, he doesn't want to kill humans anymore. Uh, he's here to kill monsters, not humans, even though those monsters were humans, and he knows that, but he's making the distinction there. Um, and that's kind of interesting. Um, the convicts drive off. Uh, they're all also part of this convict gang are very clearly like fodder of like just doofs there's like uh uh or did i write that down uh uh no i didn't write down but yeah there's clearly a couple guys there um that are just lame stooges they're just there to be to like like yeah boss you're the best and it's like no no he's not um anyway our heroes take uh have to go through a tunnel and, of course, it's full of monsters because the monsters like the dark. Uh, but also, the tunnel is blocked by some vehicles. So they go to kill the monsters, and Kathleen risks her life to throw grenades at the cars to m move them out of the way so that the Winnebago they're driving can get through. But she trips. You heard me right. She trips, and a monster's going to get her. And that is the second time in one episode that she is in peril in one episode. Uh, there's also a bunch of stuff about the warrior monk wanting to have a family and hoping that someday he'll be able to have a family because uh, um, he didn't necessarily want to be a warrior monk. One day he wanted to settle down uh, and be a, you know, a family man, uh, which he's, that's why he's, somewhat protective over Kathleen because he uh, you know he was like oh if I wasn't a monk I would have a kid your age uh, I don't know I like the monk guy I think he's pretty neat uh, of the characters in the show look I'm really just here because there's a cool looking lady fighter character that is in the opening that we have not seen yet and I'm hoping shows up and I'm hoping that she is not a villain that she joins the squad because she seemed rad uh, Gibbete is not a good show. The monsters are CG and terrible looking. They are awful looking CG uh, th that does not fit in with the rest of the show stylistically. Uh, but it also features a cool samurai and a cool ninja and a cool warrior monk. And it is pretty cool in general. So I would say if you are looking for another show and you have a bunch of shows you're watching and you just want one more and you have Crunchyroll, you can watch that. It is it is perfectly fine. It is a perfectly fine show. All right, that's pretty good. I don't like how these legs look. Uh, anyway, we are body complete except for the backpack, so let's get the backpack together. We've got a little time left in the stream, so let's try to get this backpack done. And then we'll do weapons and armor on Saturday and maybe Monday because there's probably a lot of... Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of weapon stuff and all that armor, but we might not finish up there. Uh... Well, let's get that going. Um, and then the last few minutes of the stream, we got, well, you know, about 10 minutes or so, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, is there anything going on with y'all that you want to chat to me about? Uh, feel free 
to put something in the chat if you've got something you're thinking about and you want to talk to me about that that would be fine and cool and maybe something will immediately people were like oh you're almost done with the stream i'm out of here you finished talking about your anime for the last couple days well then i'm gone and that's okay never feel like you're obligated to be here it's always a pleasure to have you um but yeah, if there's anything y'all want to chat about, uh, I go back to work next week, says Harold. Well, Harold, uh, uh, good luck, my friend. I mean, in general, good luck with everything, but particularly with that, uh, good luck to you. Uh, you know, uh, I'll be thinking about you. Um, just stay safe as a hour you can, because um, everything is fucked up. And bad. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, translation: Don't die. Yeah. Uh, don't get sick and die, Harold. If you can avoid it. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, the neighborhood conversation right now is about. Uh, somebody that lives in the next area over that is not, uh, that has uh, COVID, but is doing okay, it looks like. Who knows what that means. But yeah. But yeah. Yeah, do your best. Uh, yes, try your best. Yeah. Try your best to protect you and uh, your charges. And uh, yeah. I don't know what to say. It's a rough, weird time out there. Has been. This year has been just the fucking worst. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, well, enjoy the rest of this week, I guess. Getting the back into it. All right. Working on our backpack. Well, if anybody else has anything else they want to chat about, uh, but as always, you know, yeah, if you want to, you know, we, we can talk about reality of that stuff. If it's time to talk about that stuff, like, yeah. Oops. Oh, no. I dropped the thing. And now I gotta find it. So, I'll find that. Uh, what's your setup for your PAX Online panel? Discord, OBS. Uh, so, Matt, um, uh, I, uh, oh, Harold's doing a Chatterty stream on Saturday. That's something more positive. Hell yeah. Uh, if you're not following Harold, uh, make sure you do that, uh, H-bomb, uh, to check out, uh, what Harold is, is going to be up to as vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, uh, streaming, uh, raising some raising some monies um uh so what i'll do is and this is like a bunch of nonsense so i will use i will use obs to record and have an overlay so i can have a nice little overlay of our faces and boxes and it'll look cool and, and images uh so i'll use obs to record uh, we're going to use a Google Hangout for faces, for, for our webcams, for communicating. And then I am going to have Discord up with the images that I'll be capturing on my OBS and sending out to people in the Google Hangout so that they can see uh, the images that I'm including. Uh, it is unnecessarily complicated, but that seemed like the best way to do it. I'm also uh, just going to be sharing images or animated GIFs of the shows we we're talking about. Uh, we won't be doing video. We did video at PAX uh, East this year, and that worked out great. But I don't want to have to worry about audio uh, for the video stuff. You know, when you have somebody with a sound mixer next to you doing that work, uh, that's just, uh, this is a lot easier than if you are doing it yourself. Uh, and I don't want to have to worry about that part. I want to be able to focus on what we're, what we're talking about. So I am, uh, so yeah, so we're not going to do any of that. So I just wait, that way I can just balance out their audio, um, balance out, uh, my audio and, uh, and yeah, make a video in OBS and then, 
Uh, hopefully, we won't have to do any editing. If I do edit, I'll either use Premiere or uh, Movie Maker. I use Movie Maker sometimes if it's just like I just got to put a thing on the front and then process it again because uh, it's just faster uh, to do that because I don't really have to worry about a lot of different stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to keep it as basic as I can. That's why I'm going to record a lot in OBS because it will just be uh, easier. I have to go through and go th like I have to set up a bunch of stuff. I wanted to wait till tonight's stream was over to do a bunch of setup for that, but I'm just going to have to make some overlays and then like in the Google Hangout, like have different sources be the different faces and get that all in the overlay and get that all looking good, which it will. It'll look, it'll, it'll look fine. Um, I was thinking about skipping the overlay, but I know that they were, they weren't insistent, but they were encouraging people to use something that looked like the pack stuff. They sent a bunch of options, and some of it looked cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, should work out just fine. Okay, and... Oops. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm recording that on Saturday. I have to get... Tomorrow's going to be a busy day because I've got a bunch of stuff to put together. And then I'm also recording on another podcast that... Uh, or not podcast, uh, panel that, as I said, uh, Smack Talk Show now. Uh, I think they used Taft a way to watch videos in a group from YouTube and Google Hangouts. Uh, they may have gotten rid of that. Yeah, so no, you can you can share your screen. Uh, I think they've gotten rid of the YouTube integration, but you can see it, share your screen. So you can share videos um, through it. Uh, I could also do that with Zoom, or I could do that um, uh, in other ways. And it's not necessarily the video part of it that I was like worried about, because um, with Zoom, I could have like, I could just share my screen and then have VLC player on that screen or share the app. It's not even the screen. I could just share uh, the VLC app and they could just watch it from that. Uh, but uh, it just comes down to um, uh, I don't want to worry about the audio and like having to mix it and balance it. Also, the last time I shared video on Zoom, people couldn't hear the audio in the Zoom call, but I could hear it in my end. So I was like, ah, I'm not even going to worry about that. Uh, it's one less thing to worry about. Ooh, we're, we're going to use the rest of this really nice looking pieces here. So clip those off. But yeah, um, you know, if I was doing a stream that had a bunch of video and I had people coming in, then I would just, you know, do a Zoom thing. But I'm going to do the Google Hangout. It's easier to get what I need done. Uh... Where I might use Jitsu. I might just use Jitsu. Because the nice thing about Jitsu is that I can also record locally with it. So if I wanted to uh, have uh, that, I could. I could just have that going. Um, which might be nice. Uh, Alright, so... It's going to go on the sides here. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put put these on too early. Uh, all right, I skipped a step, and now I'm paying for it. We'll get a couple more uh, bits of this done, and then we will definitely wrap it all up, uh, or not wrap it all up, but we'll finish it up on. Uh, on Saturday, or at least get a lot more of it done. Start working on that outer armor, working on some of the weapons. It'll be fun. But yeah, my next build stream is Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, as always. Uh, so come back for that if you'd like. Uh, and we are going to raid in a couple of minutes. I'm going to find someone for, to go raid because I do like uh, raiding uh, at the end of a stream. Share the love, find somebody fun who is going to go late into the night and do something cool. Uh, and as always, hopefully someone that acknowledges that you are hosting. Because every once in a while, you end up with somebody who is just not interested in acknowledging that. And that's fine. But that's kind of a bummer. I find that to be kind of a bummer. 
But they're under no obligation to do that, so whatever. Uh, all right, so we'll do, now we'll put these in there. Almost done with this backpack. We'll finish up the backpack on, uh, on, um, she caught on Saturday. We just have to put the, basically the only thing that's missing with the backpack is, uh, the beam sabers, uh, rest on there. They hang out on the back and look like antenna. And then you can just reach up and grab them. And then you got your beam sabers. So it's just the beam saber holder. The backpack doubles as that. It's pretty good. And there it goes. Pretty basic backpack. Small, but I like the little silver on there. And that is uh, that for tonight's stream. Uh, so I'm going to go find someone for us to raid. Uh, thank you to everybody that decided to tune in. I appreciate it as always. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you for everybody. You don't always have to chat when you do. I always appreciate it. So thanks for folks that decided they wanted to uh, uh, chat and talk to me about stuff. Um, again, uh, we will continue on Saturday. Uh, so you can come check that out. And... Uh, Let's see who's doing what. Uh, bunch of people playing a bunch of different things. Uh, well, considering that somebody gave me a uh, a sub, uh, let's uh, let's go raid uh, Mr. Ben Wheeler, who is playing uh, Magic: The Gathering Gladiator, which I believe he helped develop. Uh, so we're gonna go give uh, Mr. Ben Wheeler. A, uh, a, f uh, a raid uh, and you can hang out for some fun magic times uh, and see what's going on with all Mr. Wheeler so we're just going to go do that so feel free to come along if you don't want to come along you don't have to you're uh, never obligated to come uh, on a raid but if you want to come along and see somebody cool doing something a little different playing Magic the Gathering Arena but it's still a little different than other gaming stuff uh, feel free to come along on that. But I'll see you on the next Build with Bear. Goodbye, goodbye.